Good morning. Thanks for tuning into the Kila Chari Torah Halacha Review for Monday, November the 2nd. We're talking about, uh, about uh, Kriyat Shema Shal Hamita. Yesterday we said that uh, we asked about uh, do you have to uh, lie down? Are you supposed to lie in bed? Are you supposed to sit up? Uh, so it also says, uh, in halachically speaking here, that about uh, the bedtime Shema, you should try not to interrupt. Uh, once you make the Baracha Hamapil, Hamapil Havle Shena Me'enai, uh, and going to sleep except for Kriyat Shema. Uh, the idea, uh, many of the poskim say, is that the bracha of Hamapil was a bracha on the natural uh, order of a human being's uh, need for sleep. Uh, therefore, they should go uh, together. One should lead into the other. If you're hungry, you're thirsty, after you say Hamapil, you're allowed to eat or drink. You can take care of a, a crying child. You could do a, a, parent, a favor for a parent or a spouse. Uh, but they say after that, if you get back in bed after that, to, to say uh, the first parsha of Shema, uh, and uh, and uh, go to sleep after that. It's uh, advisable to avoid making requests to someone who already said hamapil, uh, who said the bracha of hamapil. So once you say it, basically your next stop is going to be sleep, uh, dreamland. Uh, if someone forgot to daven ma'ariv or forgot to count the omer, if it's that time of the year, uh, they can do it even though they uh, ha- they've already said the bracha hamapil. Uh, you're also allowed to listen to music uh, to uh, bring sleep on. Uh, and as far as using the facilities, to, uh, using the washroom, after you say the bracha of Hamapil, you can uh, use the washroom and say Asher Yatzer uh, also. Uh, someone who wants to say the bracha outside of the bedroom can do that. Some people uh, do it as part of their evening routine while they're still uh, dressed in their daytime clothes. Uh, some say only for a purpose, like if there's better light uh, somewhere else or to avoid disturbing others. Uh, and you, at the end of the day, you only say the bracha one time in the night, uh, per evening. So if you said hamapil, you went to sleep for a little while and then woke up, uh, you don't uh, have to say it again. Someone's traveling on an airplane, a bus, a car, boat, any uh, kind of conveyance you can imagine, and you want to sleep in your seat. In other words, you have that flight uh, from here to Israel uh, that takes off at night and lands the next day. You are going to sleep in your seat. You still say hamapil, as long as you're going to sleep for half an hour, an hour or so. Yeah, uh, and uh, let's say you uh, say, go through the whole bedtime Shema and you still can't fall asleep. Uh, some say to say the first, uh, the parsha, the first parsha of Shema, Vahavta, uh, over and over again, uh, with some psukim until you fall asleep or think about other Torah topics. Uh, and if worse comes to worse, you could always turn on a Shabbos drasha. That seems to do the trick for many people. Uh, some say that the Rabbonu Shal Olam uh, at the beginning there is uh, not recited on Shabbos. Some say it is said on Shabbos, so difference of opinion there. Uh, and the first two, first two nights of Pesach are called Leil Shimurim. Uh, Pesach is called the night of watching when Hashem watches over us uh, and prevents any uh, untoward uh, uh, occurrences from happening, uh, even outside of Israel, including outside of Israel. So some say that only the first uh, portion of the Shema and the Bracha of Hamapil are said, uh, nothing else. Uh, others say that the entire uh, Nusach, the whole bedtime Shema should be said, and still others say on the first night, you say it in a short version, the second night, a longer version. Okay, we'll speak more about these topics tomorrow. I think maybe we'll finish up, so please join us then. Have a wonderful day.